Don't expect to see Michigan in the college football playoff. Really? Jim Harbaugh has agreed to his three-game suspension. There's immense pressure on Michigan. No wins in the college football playoff. It's never going to be good enough. We'll be back, and I promise that. Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh negotiating a four-game suspension with the NCAA for recruiting violations that date back to the COVID recruiting dead period in March of 2020. There was an NCAA investigation into illicit COVID-19 visits. There was some type of failure to cooperate on Harbaugh's part. The story is he went to an establishment because apparently he bought these two kids cheeseburgers. Meeting with two recruits during a COVID-19 dead period, Texting a recruit outside of an allowable time period, having analysts perform on-field coaching duties during practice, and having coaches watching players work out via Zoom. And before the season started. Michigan will self-impose a three-game ban on head coach Jim Harbaugh. I don't expect this to impact them on the field in terms of a win becoming a loss. What you do have to wonder about is they've got their best shot at a national championship in maybe some of our lifetimes, if you're younger. Does this impact that? And the answer to that, it didn't. Jim Harbaugh is returning what I think is going to be his best team at Michigan. He's got a quarterback back. He's got the best running back tandem in the country back. The defense is solid. I would say that they're even going to be better. At the end of the day, like football is a game of matchups and the line of scrimmage. And for Michigan, I love where they stand in both of those. You have a lot of continuity that you didn't have this time last year. A lot of question marks this time last year. But now with the continuity they have and the leadership they have, that I think is the difference maker. 31 to 6, the final, as the Wolverines improve to 3 0. But Michigan had not always been this successful under Jim Harbaugh. Michigan has been pretty predictable in recent years. They beat who they're supposed to beat, and they never beat anyone that they're not supposed to beat. And if there are surprises, it's a bad one. But at this point, there's no defending what's going on at Michigan. This has become just an unbridled disaster their season. Everybody's having fun at Michigan's expense, and it's tough to watch year in and year out seeing them not meet expectations. His contract expires at the end of next season. To give him an extension right now might be impossible. No wins against Ohio State. Three and three against Michigan State. No appearances in the college football playoff. No Big Ten championships. How do you justify it? Should Michigan move on from Harlow? Yes. There is a very clear delineation between pre-COVID Michigan under Jim Harbaugh and post-COVID Michigan under Jim Harbaugh. They keep him, but if you remember, he reduced his contract. He took a pay cut to stay and try to fix things at Michigan. And staying turned out to be a pretty good decision. Back to McNamara, throwing deep. He's got Johnson in the end zone. Touchdown! You just don't get bitter, you get better. No matter what, that's been, found a lot of success in that. Throws it backward pass. And now Donovan Edwards throwing deep down the sideline. He's got a receiver wide open. It's a house call for Michigan. There's there's haters. There's people that like to eat the hater tots and, and drink their haterade, you know? I mean, okay, while you're doing that, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be finding some work to do. To the 50, one man to beat. He cuts inside. He's in the clear. 10, 5, touchdown! Michigan would win back-to-back -back Big Ten championships after deciding to keep Jim Harbaugh. And in 2023, they continued their undefeated start after his return from suspension in week four. JJ's looking deep. Touchdown, Michigan! The last two years don't mean anything. Now we got to do it again. But Michigan's dominance didn't stop analysts from finding ways to criticize them. If we're talking resume versus eye test, and where Michigan has been ranked in playing absolutely nobody to this point in the season, because if we're just going resume, then we got to move Michigan down. Michigan's best wins are against two six and two teams, UNLV and Rutgers. They don't have elite wins. Michigan at three hasn't played anybody, but they're just annihilating everybody. They've looked dominant, they've looked complete, but against who? It's just not up to the par of some of the other teams. I, I do want to point out, while Michigan's schedule is poor, remaining schedule, strength of schedule, Michigan is number one, so they're going to be tested down the stretch and we'll find out. Even though Michigan was the number one seed heading into their playoff semifinal, you wouldn't know from how people were talking about them. There's immense pressure on Michigan. Because Harbaugh's the one who hasn't gotten it done. I feel like this is worst case scenario for Michigan. I feel like so, this is the worst thing that could happen. As the one seed, there's a difference in styles here. Uh, there is no Jalen Milrow in the Big Ten. There is no style of Alabama in the Big Ten. 
you just wonder about Michigan. I know a lot of people outside of the Big Ten wondered about them. Well, good news, they're going to play the game, so we get to see it. First play, Milro has to retreat, and he's sacked. Michigan flies in there, tries to escape, and cannot. What an opening series for this Wolverine. Grassman decides to pitch in late, and the catch is made. McCarthy, looking for the end zone, has a man wide open, and it's Corum walking in. And Milro's going to be knocked down for the third time. Already three sacks. And a fourth. Barner and Edwards, who can throw it, lobs it back to McCarthy, who has to retreat to make a one-handed grab. Tosses downhill to Roman Wilson. Delivers across the middle. And the catch is made by Tyler Mars, who tight ropes down the sidelines. Touchdown, Michigan. What a play. What's going on up in Michigan? Oh! But the NCAA is investigating Michigan, where a staffer allegedly scouted future opponents in person at games, which would be a violation of NCAA rules. A former Division III coach said that Connor Stallions, the Michigan analyst, paid him to record multiple Big Ten games. The assumption is different people within the Michigan program are going to these games, and they are recording the sidelines at these football games to take the signs and then obviously utilize that for Michigan during their preparation. When you're a head coach in college football, you are presumed responsible for the actions of your entire staff, even if they can't prove you didn't have direct knowledge. And that's where Jim Harbaugh could end up in the crosshairs if this thing pushes forward at the pace that it appears to be going. Breaking news out of college football where Jim Harbaugh has agreed to serve his three-game suspension for the Big Ten as part of the Michigan sign-stealing scandal. He'll be eligible to return to the sidelines for the Big Ten title game and college football playoff should Michigan be selected. You cheated! This is just a very bad look. The compass doesn't point towards them admitting anything. Are you better off without Harbaugh? I mean, a fish rots from the head. The net and the vice is beginning to close around the University of Michigan. They did something wrong. They just don't want to be punished this way for doing something wrong. It is hard to make an excuse given this report. Don't expect to see Michigan in the college football playoff. Really? If Michigan wins the national title, will you recognize them as national champs? I will refuse to recognize Michigan as the national champs. Our players came up with a, this uh, this bet. Chris Jenkins, you know, put on Twitter, bet, and we were all just like, you know, let's throw it up there. What it means to me <laughs> uh, is bringing everyone together. You know, our players trust our coaches, our coaches trust our players, and that's what our team has done, so bet. Hand off to Blake up the middle, full head of steam, Blake to the end zone, touchdown Wolverines. You could never know that they're kind of being molded for two years down the road, their head coach is going to be suspended and it doesn't matter. What Jim Harbaugh has there is now a player-led team. Inside handoff, Donovan Edwards breaks a tackle, 20, 15, 10, Donovan Edwards, touchdown Wolverines. You want to know what the best test of culture is? Take your hands off the wheel. Harbaugh was forced to take his hands off the wheel. The car didn't veer a bit. The players run the team at Michigan. That's what Harbaugh's gotten at. That's why it didn't matter that he wasn't on the sideline yesterday. Uh, they were as razor focused as I've ever seen a team. They went in there and handled business. Uh, that was the only thing that was on our mind. All the extra noise was just kind of fun for us, you know, playing around with it. But we were focused on the only goal, which was winning that football game. They came away with a 24 to 15 win here in State College to improve to 10 and 0 on the season. Well, I thank the Lord. Well, I thank Coach Harbaugh. Love the shit out of you, man. This is for you. It is the game, the 119th installment, coming your way on Saturday. There are a ton of storylines in this one, including the winner, oh, by the way, goes to the Big Ten Championship game. But maybe the biggest storyline, Coach, again, the absence of Jim Harbaugh. But you can't talk about the game without talking about how Michigan was almost never in this position. And it's been all Ohio State in the Jim Harbaugh era. Wolverines 0-5. They've lost eight in a row in this series. There's something in Jim Harbaugh's brain. I don't know what it is. He is incapable. Incapable, incapable of beating his biggest rival. A hammer and a nail do not have a rivalry. We have to stop calling this for the moment a rivalry. Is this a talent gap? Is it a preparation gap? Is it a coaching gap? What is the biggest difference between you and Ohio State at this point? I mean, I'll answer your questions, not your insults, so. I don't think it's a matter of whether they should fire him. I think Jim Harbaugh should leave. It's mm. never going to be good enough. Before COVID, Michigan was a really good college defense 
until they matched up with Ohio State. And then the Buckeyes would roll out there and they would have speed all over the place and Ohio State would obliterate that defense. And to be honest, it wasn't even that close. There's talk that they're going to fire Jim Harbaugh. They keep him. There was a fateful phone call from Jim Harbaugh to his brother John Harbaugh about the defense. I need the Baltimore Ravens defense. Who can you give me? I've got two names for you. Mike McDonald becomes the defensive coordinator at Michigan. He has a successful year. He goes back to Baltimore, and guess who Jim Harbaugh calls? The other guy, Jesse Minner. It was specifically done for one matchup. He had to beat Ohio State. Here's a quick reverse, and it's got room at the 10-yard line. Touchdown! Cornelius Johnson, he makes a man miss. He's in the clear. He's going to go. Cornelius Johnson! Haskins gets it in. He dives. He's in. Touchdown! He's got a man wide open. It's Cornelius Johnson again, John. He's in the clear. Touchdown! <laughs> he breaks it. He's at midfield at the 30, the 20. He's got Colston Loveland wide open. It's caught. 15, 10. Touchdown! Pressure coming. Here it comes. And it's sack time. Aiden Hutchinson drops Stroud. Inside handoff. Edwards, and he's got some room to the 30. Can he outrun the Buckeyes? Yeah, Seven, baby. Eight, five yards. Hassan breaks it. Leaps over a man inside the five. Hands it off to Donovan Edwards, and he's in the clear, John. To the 30, to the 35, to the 40, to the 50. They will not catch Donovan Edwards. He will score. The long drought is over. Ohio State is vanquished. Michigan will improve to 12-0, and win the Big Ten East for the second consecutive year. But that was the past. It was time to go do it again. The last two weeks, by the way, the closest games of the year for them, they've lacked some creativity and they've been very one-dimensional. How do you stop Marvin Harrison Jr.? When they need a play, this is who they go to. I, in the preseason, predicted Ohio State to win the Big Ten. I believe that Harbaugh on the sidelines does matter. I'm going Ohio State to win. Give me the Ohio State Buckeyes in beating the Michigan Wolverines. They're going to throw it, and it's intercepted! Will Johnson jumps in front of Marvin Harrison to the 15, breaks a tackle, down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line! Quorum dives, end zone, touchdown, Wolverines! JJ takes the snap, back to pass, fires far side, he's got Roman Wilson, the 25 across the 30, fires down the middle, and it's caught, Roman Wilson, inside the 5, to the end zone, touchdown, Wolverines! Action flips wide open, Abuka, touchdown Ohio State! But even when they were up 17 to 10 to start the third quarter, Ohio State goes on this 12 play, 75 yard drive, and I said, they're about to take this game over. It's McCord handing to Henderson, squirts into the end zone for a touchdown. A three yard run by Travion Henderson. And they didn't, and you know why they didn't? Because Michigan did the exact thing this game's about. They answered. Still looking, bounces out of there to the right. Looking downfield, he's gonna run. 45, cuts back inside at the 50. JJ in the open field will dive at the Ohio State 41 yard line. Fires underneath, he's got his tight end, Barner. Barner to the 30, to the 25. AJ Barner is chopped down at the Ohio State 22. The Aurora, Ohio native with a big gainer there. And we got a player down for Michigan back at the 45 yard line. That was a gain of 18. I think it's Zinter. We didn't show it to you because we knew he pretty clearly broke his leg. The air leaves the building. You can see just state of shock. And then something happened that I've never experienced before. I hear the stadium start to come alive. The crowd's getting into it here to support him. Let's go, Zach. Let's go, Zach. The team goes from devastated to unified when this tsunami of emotion from the fans pours out onto the field. And then right after that, that place is dead silent. Corum. Inside handoff, Corum, he's got a hole. Corum breaks a tackle to the 10, to the five, by Corum, to the end zone. Touchdown, Wolverines. And it's, it's not game over, but as you look back on the game in totality, that's the kind of stuff that decides it. Kyle McCour, he's going to sail that one down the right sideline, ball in the air, caught by Fleming inside the Michigan 30 where he's taken out of bounds. Pressure coming, throws middle of the field, caught Harrison, who moves to the right side and slips into the end zone, Marvin Harrison, for a touchdown of 14 yards. 
305 to go, third and one. JJ, handoff, Blake Corm up the middle, first down, and the clock becoming an issue for the Buckeyes. JJ turns, hands it off to Blake Corm, who bounces it outside, 40, 35. Blake Corm puts his head down, stays in bounds inside the 30, down to the 25 yard line. The kick is up, and the kick is good. With one minute exactly remaining in the game, Ohio State will have it trailing 30 to 24. We know this game. When this game comes around, you want that. You come here for the pressure and, and this game. So it makes us want to run through a wall and, and go attack it. And our guys don't flinch, regardless of the situation. You know, what would you expect from a, a trained group like ours? McCord in a shotgun. Back to pass. Looking. Here comes the rush. He's hit as he throws. Then it is intercepted. The one where he's picking off. It's the Ohio native. <laughs> Ohio State is vanquished. The Wolverines will win this one and go to Indianapolis for the Big Ten Championship against the Iowa Hawkeyes. And that's what Harbaugh's built. He's built an organization there. Ryan Day's got a good one as well. It's just that Jim Harbaugh's is better right now. Michigan's is better right now. It goes to show you how strong we are, you know, how much we love each other, how much we love our brothers, how much we love the University of Michigan. Uh, you know, it goes to show how, you know, when adversity hit us, you know, we didn't fall, we didn't crumble, but we stood tall. We just kept going and going and going. Samaj Morgan in the clear, 40, 50. Samaj Morgan in a foot race down the near sideline. 20, 15, 10, and he's knocked out of bounds inside the Iowa 10 yard line. Michigan gets the win here in the Big Ten Championship game, 26 to nothing. The final rankings from the selection committee, the number one team in the country is, and it's Michigan. And the Wolverines are going for the third straight year. They're 13-0. We didn't let naysayers mess with our feelings or anything like that. You know, we just stood together, stuck together, and uh, now we're here, number one team in the nation. It's, it's amazing. Who's got it better than us? Oh, but playoff success had been hard to come by for Michigan. The Wolverines were a severe underdog in their first college football playoff appearance against Georgia in 2021, and it showed. Delivers downfield, it's Brock Bowers, and Brock Bowers scores, and Georgia lobs to the end zone, caught, touchdown! A jump ball, and it's a second interception from Darian Kendrick. Manhandling Michigan, dominating them from start to finish. And then in their second college football playoff appearance. 13-0 going into the Fiesta Bowl. Absolutely, I thought they were going to win that football game. There's no doubt in my mind. Michigan's a second half team. I'm going with the big blue. J.J. McCarthy, his creativity with his legs. I like the old school Jim Harbaugh, Michigan Wolverines to win this one. And TCU came out and flat handed it to him. One less big play, one more big play by us, um, you know, one more opportunistic play. Complete and picked off, intercepted by D Winners, and a touchdown! It was disappointing, you know, uh, mistakes being made. Quentin Johnston has the first down, and off he goes! They are not going to catch him! And that was, uh, that ended up being the, the difference in the game. The Horn Frogs, they march on to the championship game. Can't wait to watch the tape, but we'll be back, and I promise that. Jalen Milrow has been very clutch all season in situations like this. Goes straight up the middle, and Barger's down near the goal line. McClellan walks in, Alabama on top. Here's the flea flicker, and it's a misfire. Porham tried to pitch it back. It's hooking, and he missed it left. 4.41 to go. They can't be sure they'll see the football again. We need to go all in on this drive and finally get something going on offense. It's been a mighty struggle here in the second half. McCarthy, wide open. Catch made by Corum. First down and much more. Weaves his way into Alabama territory. McCarthy gets the edge. J.J. McCarthy scoots down inside the 35, is tackled. Play fake. McCarthy scanning downfield and throws it high, and Wilson's got it. Roman Wilson weaving down inside the 10. Keeper, and they pitch it to a touchdown as Wilson walks in. And we'll have it to overtime. Big yards, three Michigan tight ends in the ball game. They handed to Corum again and makes a cut. First down. Spinston scores! Blake Corr puts Michigan on top in overtime! The weight room, uh, you know, with Coach Herb, uh, you know, puts us through. 
you know, uh, balance work, low center of gravity, squats, you, know, you name it. It was uh, all the work that we put in and uh, it showed when, it, when we needed to be counted. Here we go. No more timeouts to take here. Game on the line. That's Williams in motion. Low snap. Melrose stopped. Michigan makes a stand and comes up with a milestone playoff victory. You nailed it the first time. Who's got it better than us? Right in. Two perfect seasons collide, the winner to join a very exclusive club of 15-0 national champions and end a more than quarter century championship drought for their schools. Welcome to the College Football Playoff National Championship. Michigan with the distractions, early with Jim Harbaugh, late with Jim Harbaugh, but a veteran team that's been through some highs and been through some very difficult, challenging moments two years ago against Georgia, last year against TCU. Just a vision to get to this point, and now both teams are here. Championship Monday, welcome to it. He's got the football. Bumps into traffic and escapes. Donovan Edwards racing to the end zone. Michigan flexing immediately. Donovan Edwards, who scored the touchdown in the first possession, back in the game, and he's loose again. Edwards off and running. Welcome back, Donovan Edwards. 46 yards. Wolverines loaded with weapons in the run game. They go after their 1,000-yard rusher, and now it's Corum is loose. Boy, Corum down the sidelines. They've got an angle. He cuts it back and finally is brought down to the 20. Uh, you know, coaches always say playmakers have to make plays. So many guys make plays. But when the play needs to be made, playmakers make them. We have a lot of them. Penix has time, watches, touchdown! Washington does not flinch when they face a deficit. They've been in tight games all year long in the Pac-12. Now just has to lob it up, and it's... It's intercepted, no, drop. Did he catch it? Yeah, he did! Did he catch it? He did! McCarthy pulls it and finds Loveland over the middle, and the tight end galloping deep in Darsky territory. Instead, they just handed this time with Warren. Sets back, breaks the tackle, touchdown, Michigan. Penix looks the other direction down the seam. It's intercepted by Sandra Still. Mikey Sandra Still has a couple of blockers. A convoy. Michigan set up inside the 10. He's got it. Michigan barrels in. Hey, it's a polarizing figure. There are people out there that believe that whatever Michigan does is tainted. That's up to you to decide, but hail, hail Michigan. They are the champions of college football 2023. When we said to come back, it was a lot of us. We said we had unfinished business. So I'll leave you all with this. Business is finished.